God's picture for you and God's design for you is not to be flustered, not to be removed, but for you to be stable and rock solid. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. My name is Pastor Shola Kinwale, the host of Fresh Dew, Pastor Nkechiene. My pastor has given me the opportunity to come to you with the Word of God. Fresh Dew is a program that is designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and to give fresh inspiration and direction for your life. And in our last episode, we started a message series which we have titled, Becoming Stable in Changes changing times, becoming stable in changing times. And this is part two of the message series. So we'll just read our text one more time. Uh, In the subsequent parts, we may not read everything, but I want to, since since we're still at the early part of the series, read the entire Psalm and then let's take it up from there. So our text is Psalm 46, beginning in verse one. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, He uttered his voice, the earth melted, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is a refuge. And so we are looking at this psalm as our key text. There are several things in this psalm, but the main point we're bringing out is what the psalmist is doing here, that life changes because he's describing things that go on. He's speaking metaphorically and he's talking, and he could also be taken literally, but that things in the world will change. The earth may be removed, the mountains may be carried into the sea, the waters may roar and form. He's using that pic- those pictures to show us the uncertainty, the undulation, the transience, transience, yes, the change in the world that we live. And these changes that occur in our world come with a sole and singular purpose to cause us to be, cha- to be affected negatively and so forth. So the psalmist is showing us in effect that life changes and we live in troubled times. I also mentioned by way of introduction that looking at the world we live in today, I don't know what part of the world you're viewing this program from, but the part of the world where we live in, where this is being recorded, being broadcast, things are just at, you know, we have hyper galloping inflation. Prices have doubled, tripled, you know, in some cases quadrupled within a period of nine, seven, nine months or thereabouts. I mean, things have just gone all right and gone south. Is there an answer for the people of God in, me, in the midst of life-threatening situations like this? Well, there always is. There is always an answer for us in the Word of God. There, is, there are always promises that we can latch onto and base our lives on. And that's the essence of this series, to make you stable unflustered, on negative, to prevent you from being negatively impacted when all these things happen. Because to one degree or another, and at one time or the other, these things are going to come into the world, come in, invade your space. But even though they invade your space, they come into the world, your context, wherever you are, God's picture for you and God's design for you is not to be flustered, not to be removed, but for you to be stable and rock solid. So for this to happen, there are things that must be reality with us. Firstly, we said, be established in things that do not change. And it is possible, as we saw in our last episode. In a world with things that change, we 
must recognize that some things do not change. There are certain things that do not change. And the first thing we said is God's character. And I introduced that, that God is, if God does not change, circumstances do not change God. You know, you know, we pay lip service to many things. You know, if we ask somebody in church, do circumstances uh change God. They'll say, God forbid. My God is a faithful God. He's the covenant-keeping God. He does not change. We work scripturally eloquent. Then if you ask that same person, so why are you bothered? Why are you worried? If God does not change, then God's stability, God's permanence, God's consistency must have a bearing on your life and therefore the situations of your life. So to remain stable, we must identify things or someone right, in this situation, that does not change. And that person is God. So God's character does not change. So when we speak about God's character, what are we referring to? There are several aspects of his character I want to double down on. The first one is his goodness. His goodness. Look at James 1.17. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. There is no variation or shadow or turning. So we see here that God is a good God. Rather, better said, God is the good God. God is the good God. God gives good because he's good. You know, when things are changing around us, like again, <clears throat> I use the example of our nation, with all these things going on, there is a tendency, that, you know, what people often say is, where is God? Oh, isn't God seeing the suffering? The suffering was worse, was terrible, was terrible, pardon me. But now it's become so worse. Where is God? And the very, one of the very first things that is attacked when these things of this nature occur is the character of God. People slander God. People vilify God and they attack his essential character. And that essential character is goodness. His goodness is attacked and is called into question. Now, in that verse we read, James 1.17, that word good is a Greek word, agathos, which describes being good, so, uh, being good, all right, describes that which is good in its character or constitution, in its character or constitution, and is beneficial in its effect. It's beneficial in its effect. So it says every good gift. So this, he's showing us, James is showing us that God gives good gifts because he is good. Now, things may change in your life. Things may go from, you know, in, 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 in the world you live in, things may go, very, you know, from bad to worse. Things may not be stable. But there must be some things that you must never question in your life. You must never question the goodness of God because you need that revelation. You need to have a deep understanding of God's goodness if you want to change the things that are around you. You see, once your heart is established in the goodness of God, it becomes easy to receive from God. It's even easy to change the negative situations that you face because you don't begin to ask those questions that people, people ask, where is God? You know, is God really good? or you have the picture of a schizophrenic God. God is good, but sometimes, well, maybe God is working something out we cannot say. You know, and then you begin to come up with all kinds of ideologies, convoluted and twisted thoughts, which are very, very unscriptural. But understand that God is good. The definition of the word good here is one who gives, shows one who gives something because he is good. Why do I say so? That word means good in its character or constitution. So God is good in his character. Remember, we're talking about his character in his constitution or his makeup. And also, it's a word that means it is beneficial in its effect. In other words, when God gives good, when God gives things, they are good. They are beneficial to us. You know, people often say things like, you know, God gives blessings in disguise. So God can put cancer on somebody because he wants to teach them good. Mm -mm, that is not true. Why? Because it goes contrary to that, to the definition, that which is good in its character and in its composition. Let me read a statement here uh, from, from Vines, giving this definition. He says, God is essentially 
absolutely and consummately good. That's awesome. God is essentially, he's absolutely and he's cons- consummately good. So let's do a little bit of more digging in this verse. And that is James 1.17. Okay. It says that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. Now, if you look at that verse closely, it contrasts God's goodness with the son. Or in the context of our discussion, we can take that further, take that a layer more and say that it contrasts God's goodness, constant goodness with the transience of the son. So observe what he says again. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, comes down from the father of lights, that is God, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. When he speaks about variation or shadow of turning, he's referring to the sun. And he's saying that unlike the sun that shifts its position, that shifts its motion and so forth, God is constant and God does not change. Let me read that to you from the Amplified. The Amplified. Every good gift and every perfect, free, large, full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all that gives light in the shining of whom there can be no variation arising or settings, rising or setting, or shadow cast by his turning as in an eclipse. That's just awesome. So the Amplified Version does exactly what it says. It amplifies it and you can get a better meaning. So observe here that there are two places that uh, James shows us that God is constant compared to the Son. The first one is God's constant good character. And we've seen that James says that God does not change. He doesn't shift like the sun shifts. Now, when the sun shifts, of, let me make this statement first. When we look at some things that are constant in nature, do you realize that even the things that we say that are constant in nature are not absolutely constant one way or the other. I mean, you talk about the uh, the sun. The sun is one of those things that are constant in nature. The sun sets at night, uh, at night, yes, in the evening, and it rises in the morning. If you observe what the Amplified says, it talks about rising or setting. So the sun sets and the sun arises. Now, you say the sun is constant in that every morning it comes up. And every evening, you know, it goes down. And that is true. You can count on that. But here's the thing. Even that shows some changes. Even that shows that that, that there are variations. That even though the sun comes up and it it rises and it sets, the sun is not always at the place where it was. Yet we say it is constant. And in terms of its functionality, it is. All right? We plan our lives based on the sun. But apart from what I just talked about, the sun rising, the sun setting, moving and whatnot, do you also realize that occasionally there are inconsistencies in the operation of the sun? That is why we have what is called an eclipse. And that is what James describes. James describes, he says, or shadow cast by his turning as in an eclipse. So an eclipse, Eclipse shows us that there are vari- is one form of variation in the light the sun bestows. So an eclipse is an obscuring of the light from one celestial body by the passage of another between it and the observer or between it and its source of illumination. So he's telling us that even though this sun that we think of as being very, 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 very constant, occasionally the sun prevaricates. The same thing happens with, with the weather. You know, now, now with all with what we see in the world, you know, the world, there's what is known as what we now have come to recognize as global warming. And if 10 years ago you didn't believe in global warming, the way the weather is, I don't know what how it is in your part of the world, <laughs> but over here, global, it will make the way the weather is changing will make a, you a believer or a disciple of global warming. My point is that things are changing in our world. But God is not like that. Let me read a quote to you here from uh, Douglas J. Moo, a very uh, revered and renowned scholar. 
when he's co commenting on this verse, uh, James 1. He says, James is not writing a scientific treatise, but he's using general language about the constant motion of heavenly bodies to make a point about God. That is, he does not change like the heavens do. You see that? Philo, the first century Jewish philosopher, made a similar point by contrasting God with his creation, including the sun. Now look at this poignant statement. Listen to this poignant statement. Every created thing must necessarily, necessarily undergo change. For this is its property, even as unchangeableness is the property of God. Oh my God, that's so powerful. I have to read it again. Every created thing must necessarily undergo change, for this is its property, even as unchangeableness is the property of God. And so while, while, while things change, one character of God, aspect of God's character, is that he does not change. And that's why we're talking about his goodness. His goodness does not change. So I said that James is showing us God's constant good character. God is not good today and evil tomorrow. You know, many of us have the idea, the mind, many Christians, I should say, have the mindset of Job. When Job was afflicted and those things happened, he lost his livestock, he lost, lost his children, I believe his seven sons and three daughters. In one day, everything was so terrible. And then his, his wife, you know, wanted to incite him to curse God. He said, just curse God and die. And Job said, I mean, Job's heart was right, but his theology was wrong. He said, shall we receive good from the hand of God and not evil? You see, that is the mindset that many Christians have, that God gives good and he gives evil. And that if God gives good today, then he's justified in giving evil. That God, if God shows his good, you he shows you his good side, he must also show you his evil side or should, should give you evil. That's not God. For God to do that, that would mean that God will be transient. God will change like the sun changes. God will change like nature changes. According to Philo, these changes are the properties of mankind, that the property of nature are the properties of the creation and the creatures of God. But God does not change. And his goodness must change we must recognize that his goodness does not change. The other thing we see is that God's constant gifts of good things, every good and every perfect gift comes from above is what Jim says. Every good and every gift comes from above and then he describes a God who does not change. What does that tell us? It tells us therefore that there is no time that good and perfect gifts will not be bestowed by the good God. That is to say, God is always giving good. God is always transmitting good because he says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above and this God does not change. If he does not change, that means he's still giving good. That means it doesn't matter what is going on in the world and so forth. It doesn't matter the changing economy. It doesn't matter what is going on. God has goodness to give. And in fact, to prove this, James uses the present and tense and the active voice in this, in this verse when he says uh, every good and every perfect gift comes down, comes down. That Greek word come down is a Greek word katabainon, which means it is coming down. It is present tense. That means it is ongoing. It is happening right now and it is active. That means God is the one giving it. God is the one doing it. So there is no time in your child, your life as a child of God that God is not giving good. In other words, the economy cannot frustrate God. In other words, the situation in the part of the world that you're living in cannot threaten and, and, and successfully challenge the working of God. So things may not be going on well where you are, but the goodness of God is constantly falling. Every good gift and every perfect gift from this God who does not change is coming down. The psalmist said somewhere that you are good and you do good. Because God is good, he must of a necessity do good. Because his nature is good, he cannot but give good things. And his, his transmission of good things, listen now, it's not occasional. It's not okay. He's transmitting today. He's not transmitting tomorrow. I know that there are 
uh, you know, they are what we may call spectacular, unusual moves of God. I accept that. But God is always giving goodness. God is always giving provision. God is always giving healing and so forth and so on. So no matter what situation you're facing, you're facing right now, whatever the challenging or the changing situations around where you are, rest assured, God is good and he is giving and bringing good into your life. All you just need to do is to step out, go out with your bucket, go out with your container, go out with your receptacle to receive and receive what he's given to you. Father, thank you for your word. We give you praise and we give you glory because you are good and your goodness does not change. We rest and rely on your goodness and we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you alive? but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide. And he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 fresh Dew, which is 0700-3737-4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234-700-3737-4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.